أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear viewers and welcome to Ahlul Bayt TV live tonight where we have a very interesting discussion and fortunately or unfortunately it is the final segment of a show that has been hosted in collaboration with ABTV and IUS discussing about marriage. Now marriage is obviously one of the most interesting concepts in Islam. A sunnah is what it is described as by the Prophet and for some as they believe completes half of their faith. And on the final segment of this series which is part number five we will be discussing about how do you actually get to find your spouse. And to discuss this topic with me tonight, I have been joined by Sayyid Ali Rida Rizwi, the ex-president of Majlis Ulama. Uh, we have also been joined by Brother Karim Husseini, who is the vice chairman of IUS and also a member of the executive committee. And we also have a sister on board with us, a sister Furu, who is the IUS treasurer and also the member of the executive committee. Uh, my dear honorable guest, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome live on tonight's show. Now, dear viewers, before we get into the gist of the show, just a quick reminder, you could partake into this discussion by calling us live on the numbers located at the bottom of your screen or tweet us at on all social media, including Facebook and Twitter. So, um, my dear guest, we will start with Said Ali. Uh, Said Ali here. Said Ali. It says that uh, marriage is. Uh, some of some of them believe it's a match made in heaven. So you, you know, some they they some some traditions which is authentic or not authentic. That is not uh, something I can vote for. But it says that when you when Allah creates you, the, there is three things that is written for you. One is your destiny. One is your risk, and one is the name of your spouse. Now I don't know how far true that is, but if it is, you know. Would you say that the the looking and the finding of a, of a spouse is something that starts at a particular age, or is it something that has to be you know something unless when you are ready to get married and that's when you start looking for one? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There's a whole debate on what is predestined in your life and the things that you have to look for right. uh, in terms of um, you know the nature and uh, in fact of the Jabra Tafis debate. Right. Um, uh, do we have complete free will or complete compulsion? And we believe the Shias, the Ahlul Bayt and Muslims followers believe that it is in between the two. Right. And is marriage one of the things which is predestined? Um, even if it is, it does not mean that you do not strive and work hard to, to find. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Holy Quran, Whatever He likes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He uh, wills, He writes for you, your destiny. And whatever He wills, he uh, um, obliterates, so he removes. So your destiny can change and you by striving and working hard can change things. Through many things, through du'as and through sadaqah, right. through prayers and all of those things have an impact. Now, um, so many times you say, well, it was my destiny, everything was written wrong and I have now ended up in this mess and because that's how Allah has intended. Never one should do that. Uh, one should, uh, uh, you know, uh, try and find the right spouse for themselves and while working hard to look for a spouse um, you should monitor you know the family the individual and then get married to that person many times people um, make their decisions without doing their homework and then they go and blame uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it Interesting. Um, and, and, and many other people so there is no one to blame sometimes um, and sometimes things happen I have seen with very good people, bad experiences happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after every difficulty and hardship, you will always have a good result. Right. So I have seen people go into a, a, a bad experience and they come out and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces it with a much greater uh, result. And they never anticipated that they would marry a person uh, that good. Right. So I have seen both of these things happen. Many times it's only a trial for you. So you get into a bad relationship, it's a trial, you come out and Allah SWT gives you a much better uh, result of your patience and your difficulties that you've been through. And some people do not. They, they have you know, a few bad experiences. Um, and even then they should uh, repent and they, they, they should never complain. Right. If someone like Asiya can go through a bad experience of having Faraon as her husband and the Holy Prophet says she is one of the best women ever. Uh, so that was her trial. Uh, and likewise it could be the other way around as well. Um, 
but I do believe that it is uh, very difficult to find out about a person when people are looking for spouses, everyone is on their best behavior, and it is difficult to find out about what they really are like until you start to live with them. Yeah, true. Um, but it is important that you try and find out from their family and friends, and many times people cover up uh, the things that they know about the person because they think, I do not wish to be blamed for uh, something. Yeah. For, for something. And many times they say things that may break a relationship, uh, they dramatize or they uh, exaggerate. Right. Um, so both are wrong. But you have to be honest when a person asks you about a proposal. Now, the traditional proposals still do exist in Britain. Um, I don't want to be taking too much of the time. Uh, but the last thing I want to say on this, the traditional methods are when two families find out about each other. So, uh, you know, the boy's family would go and propose to the girl's family. So those still exist. Right. Um, and, but because most of, most of the people are uh, immigrants to this country, so they have less context like back home. They have more context, family, friends and others who would recommend right. and contribute in finding spouses. Right. But here people are limited with choices, limited with contacts. Um, so there is a limitation in the Western world for the immigrants yeah. who do not have as many contacts um, and as many um, methods right. uh, of finding spouses for their children. Right. And people finding spouses, uh, spouses for themselves. So that is a problem in this country. Right. There's a very interesting thing uh, that you mentioned, obviously, is uh, it's about uh, people doing their homework and people finding out about their families. Now, I would like to bring uh, Brother Karim into this. But before, before we begin this discussion, I think we have a caller on the line. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Yes, welcome uh, to the show, dear brother. Uh, I would just like to ask... Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Do you think that mutta is a good way to find out if a spouse is compatible? Right, we shall answer that. Thank you very much uh, for your question. Um, before we before we answer that question, let's 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 finish this discussion. So, it's it's about doing your homework. Now, um, my question to you is: If you do your homework and you find out that the girl is is or the, or the girl or the guy is someone who is who is very well mannered and you know is what you're looking for, but then you have a problem with uh, with the family. So you have a problem with either the you know your potential mother-in-law, your potential father-in-law. Does that give you a does, does that give you the right to make a decision to reject that because of the family? That's question number one. And question number two to Sister Furu is: People said that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So do you say that yes now? Uh, and and the other discussion also that comes in is the greatest gift you can ever give to your children is to ha to give them beautiful grandparents, right? Now, do you then say it's not only about myself and the uh, you know and the opposite uh, opposite gender? Is it also about families getting married? Now, before we answer, before Sister Fru comes, I'll ask uh, Brother Krim. What do you think? Do you have a right to make a decision based on what the family background is? Yeah, I think um, it goes back to the individual as well. Um, family do have a major role to play. Right. And I don't think it sh the, the family side should be overlooked because you know you're going to be going to the to the in-laws and you know regularly you know your your ch your your children um, will be the grandchildren of of, of obviously your your mother-in-law and father-in-law. Um, so I think you know it's, it's uh, it sometimes can be unfair on 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 the children uh, or, or sorry the, the the spouse the spouses which are getting you know getting married. Uh, because sometimes they do have to look at, I think, the the, the family in law, um, and it is it does, they do they do play a role sometimes, um, unfortunately. Um, so sometimes they they you have to kind of uh, look look at that as well. You can't just say, okay, this is the girl as she is, you know, or this is the guy as he is. That's it. I mean, it could be perfect match, um, but I think. You have to look at the family as well because there are maybe certain habits or you know certain things that you just you can't overlook. So on a scale of one to ten, one being the lowest and ten being the highest, what would you say um, is your score on how important the family is and how how important is it to base your decision based on the family's background? I don't think someone can make a decision just solely on the person right. that you're going getting married. I think the family does play a role. Right. Uh, from one to ten. <laughs> It, it does have a big 
uh, impact, uh, I think. Um, and especially depending on the personality of the family, do they get involved? Do they do they stay out? It depends. So you need these are questions that you need to ask. Um, one to ten, I'll say around six to seven. This I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the cream. Um, uh, Sister Furu, tell us, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? Yeah. So are you right in saying that this is going to create a problem for me and the mother has an influence directly on the daughter and the father's influence directly on the son and then you can then make a decision yes the girl or the or the or the guy is a perfect match for me but I'm not going to go in because the mother has a problem or the father has a problem I think the concept that they say you marry into someone's family is very true right. um, you can't really disregard that I mean Islam always encourages you to create peace between families and always keep that connection going um, the apple doesn't fall from the tree. It could be true. I mean, people say stuff. Children don't often reflect that greatly on parents. Right. I mean, every generation is different. Imam Ali salam, always said, do not force your children to be like um, your generation because right, they're born true. in a different generation. Yep. Um, so you can't really, you know, decide on that factor. Um, I think that that factor, you know, the fact that you need to look in, look at the family as uh, somebody who will always be there, who is somebody that you can always communicate with, is very important. So it's not just looking for the right spouse, you have to look for the family too. Right, so, so on a conclusive note, yes or no? It's not as black and white as, right. as you make it out. <laughs> because, you know, um, you try to make things work, but if your spouse is supportive with you and creates that harmony between yourself and right. your family and their family, I think things will be smooth. Thank you very much, um, Sister Fu. I believe um, we have a caller um, on the line. Asalaamu Alaikum. Okay, I think we have lost the caller. Um, Sayyidina, let's, let's get back to you in regards to the, to the question that just came in. Is muta um, a, a way to find out what your spouse is like? Uh, can I just quickly comment on the two? Yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually saw you smiling quite, quite often. <laughs> so, I'll, yes, l give us, give us your thoughts on this. Um, basically, I have seen both happen. Right. Um, people have not had good, uh, good relationship with their in-laws. Yeah. And their marriage has worked, and many times it has not uh, worked. Yeah. Now, uh, personally speaking, I always tell the people to. Um, even if you have difficult in-laws, uh, do not make it an issue. Try and accommodate and try and change. Um, women are much stronger in terms of emotions and understanding the psychology. Men are quite weak in that. Right. Um, they have very, you know, based on the traditions of the Holy, you know, Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt al So the women, um, you know, are very accommodating. So they can, but men are not so accommodating, unfortunately. Right. So they have to try and give in. Uh, and try and think that, you know, I have to try and adjust. So tell them themselves from beforehand. Women are very strong in terms of accommodating. You know, they change their name, they move. and So uh, many times if they are strong enough, they can. And men have to make an effort. Right. So yeah. they have to make a much greater effort than the women. So women maybe, uh, you know, they, they have to make an effort, obviously, but not as great an effort as for men. So I always tell the people that don't overlook it, but do not uh, reject a good uh, potential just because you think I will not be able to. If the family is good, then you should try and accommodate yourself that I will not adjust into this family. If the family is bad, then do not punish them. We have had many examples in the history of Islam where the parents were not good, but the children were. Very true. I, I, I actually feel <laughs> very supportive um, of, the, of that statement of yours. Because we have had incidents where, where the, the Imam and the Prophets have, have actually got married to, to families that are not the greatest um, of families where, the, where, where their wives came from. And you could see the impact that uh, a spouse could have uh, to bring someone back to the right path. Right? And I've had discussions about this. Now obviously because we'll be going um, on, on a short break very soon, I, we will base that discussion on, on our second session. But just to answer the caller, yes. uh, would you say that muta is an ideal way or one of the ways to find out more about your spouse? Uh, not necessarily, not always. Every community is different. In some communities it's more, more established, it is more recognized, it is more practiced. Right. And in many communities it's not practiced at all. Right. Uh, and I have seen the consequences where it is not practiced and if you try and impose when there are intercultural marriages and they say, well, it is common in our community, let's 
try and find out. Uh, many times problems start and many times it can help right. if you are, um, many people say for a few months. Um, so they have conditions where they will not have any physical relationship but they, will, they can try and communicate with each other. Right. So find out more. And it does help many of the community members where they basically, or in other communities they call engagement for six months or something. Yeah. Or they basically uh, spend more time without any decisions on marriage. They say, okay, let's a month to two months. And if they're still not satisfied, they say, okay, three months to six months. And then we'll call it um, that, yes, we are going ahead with this marriage or we are not. Okay. Sister Fru, what's your, um, what's your take on, on, on this? Um, it's very difficult for a female to take this decision on because we're, we need to protect ourselves. Yeah, right? very true. Right. You know, for a man, it's not much of an issue. Um, it's, it depends on, um, on the female side of the culture of the female side, I, I guess. If you're very cultural, very religious, you might not go for that option. I mean, you're very protective about your daughters. I know a few families who've rejected this idea because, you know, they instantly think, you know, what if the guy isn't is a yeah. bad guy? Um, we're going to have to deal with him for about six months. I don't know if I have many months that they have done this. Um, uh, but at the same time, I think if the Islamic barriers are not broken and if you stick to all the rules, I think it could be beneficial for you to get to know somebody very well. Um, however, it's not necessary. I don't feel that it's necessary. You right. can still do get to know somebody without breaking the Islamic barriers. Right. Okay, uh, we, have, we have one minute before you go on break. Um, so uh, I'll bring it to Brother Kareem. Your take on this? Uh, I think... Uh, there's a lot of uh, young people, sort of, you know, the, uh, I hear, like, I need to get to know her, or I need to get, to, you know, get to know her properly. Right. Um, it's, it's not that sometimes, you know, you, you see the person at the, you know, the, 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 the girl's house, you know, three, four times, and that's it, and it can be a very successful marriage. Um, and you can end up, you know, the other way around. But then again, as well, the same way with, let's say, the muta, where you can go out and you're a bit more free. Uh, that has its positives and negatives. But I don't think it's, it's how long mm. you get to know someone because really you get to know them when you actually move in with them. Right. You go on holiday with them on your honeymoon. Uh, I think a lot of other things come out because that time during, let's say, the you know that time you go as a muta. It might not be, you know, everyone's going to be, it's, it's like the engagement time, the best behavior, yeah. you know, you want to be like, you want to impress the other person. So it might not be the best solution, but it could be, it can go either way through Muta or seeing them less. Right. That's very interesting. I'll, I'll bring that up when, when we come back from break, because you said it could, you, you get to know a person after you've actually got married. But then the question that I've just been asked here is, is it not then very late? to regret your decision or to actually acknowledge your decision but um, we will discuss this when you come back from break dear viewers just a quick reminder you can partake in this discussion by calling us on the number at the bottom of your screen or engaging with us on social media which is facebook or twitter at ahl bay tv we'll now be going on a short break and when we return we will discuss about how do you actually find out what methods are being used and whether is it too late to make a decision after mut'a or after marriage? Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back dear viewers to Ahl Bay TV Live where tonight we are discussing a very common, interesting, fascinating, exciting but for some depressing topic. Let's talk about marriage. Now this um, discussion which is uh, the final segment of a six uh, part series uh, will be based on how do you actually find a spouse. Now before we went on break um, uh, myself and and the honorable guests here discussed about the concept of how long do you give uh, how long do you actually give a person to you know to two people to get to know each other now uh, also in that we had a we had a caller who asked about the the concept of muta and whether it's it's something that is very relevant now 
the whole point, as, as we all discussed, was to get to know the person. But then, Sayyidina, you mentioned a point where you said sometimes people just don't be themselves just in order to get the end result, which is to impress the other partner in order to get engaged or married. Now, is that really the basis of how muta and engagement can be considered? Because as Brother Rashid said, uh, sorry, Brother Karim said is, you get to know the person once you get married and then once you go on honeymoon and you travel like Imam Ali said when you work and you travel and, and, and those sort of things but then the question is isn't it too late by that and, and realize oh no this is not the right person um, unfortunately people are not honest to each other right um, and the entire purpose of um, you know uh, uh, before marriage a relationship like a muta or an engagement or something is to really find out about the two individuals right they should be finding they should be honest to each other if they have any issues then they should be but that's not what happens and and because the people are not honest and they are trying to impress the other uh, so they are um, and many people are quite and unfortunately one other thing I want to say, because they're quite immature, they are young and they have no experience and this is the first time and so they don't know, they have no guidance. They have no guidelines or advice from elders that no, you have to be honest, you, this is what this is for. They say, okay, now you're engaged and they're expecting them to, there is no manual, there is no guideline out there, why, what is the purpose of this? Right. Now, um, people who become mature, people who, who go into an age, you know, they find out much later, well, this is probably if I had known this before, I would have acted differently and I would have said something. Right. Um, um, one thing I do want to say that divorce is only in the, uh, in the state of ithtarar, as we say that, you know, if there is no other choice. It is not a choice in Islam. It is only when there is no other way. No other solution, right. So, uh, uh, many people say, okay, I have this, you know, small issues. Um, on based on which they, they make decisions, you know, this is the right person for me or this is not the right person on small issues. While they should be looking at the bigger picture and a, uh, a life that they're going to be spending together. Um, so I don't think that, um, I think one month to two months are enough for two people to find out about each other. Right. If they are being honest and they have enough time and they are uh, being realistic and the real issues are being discussed. Um, so that for a person can be enough but two people are very um, they have you know limited communication skills they don't like to talk it is more difficult for them they would need probably three four months six months but the real thing is the real truth is that you only truly find out about each other once you live together right. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I place love between you once you decide to get married to someone for the right reasons if you do look for iman then I place the love and many times, because we are marrying someone for wrong reasons, then uh, the, the hadith says that because if you marry a person for the wrong reasons, you would find in them what you hate the most. Wow. Um, so it, all of those things happen. Now, many times it is a trial. Many times it's, a, uh, it's an experience, but it is not an experience that one wants to have. Based on psychology, uh, the most distressful thing in life is divorce. Uh, and the second most distressful, they say, is, you know, is, is, is moving to another place, a new town or new. So, you know, on the list of most distress, distressful or most uh, stressful things, you know, top of the list, um, I think, uh, is either, you know, experiencing a death experience, you know, of your family member and, and divorce. Right. So it is that depressing and that stressful. So I would say that one should be very careful and utilize that time positively and correctly for the, with the guidance of some of the people who are married to, to, uh, uh, to explore the other person um, and their personality rather than just their looks and who they are. But you know, the, the real them, explore their psychology and then marry them. All right, there, there is, there's two things that you have said here. It's um, marrying for the wrong reasons and then you've also said um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places a love between, between if you marry for the, for the right reasons. Now, uh, we, we will discuss that, but you've also mentioned about divorce. Interestingly, we haven't found how to find a spouse, but Sayyidina has already gone into divorce. Uh, for those of you watching, this is your time to partake into this discussion. Do give us a call on the number at the bottom of your screen, and we will be willing um, to get um, your feedback, and we will also um, be very excited to engage in a discussion with you. Now, uh, 
let's discuss this whole concept of of uh, of how to find a spouse now there is there's a traditional way and there's a there's a so-called modern way the traditional way um is to, to to go through a matchmaker you know and you know you have it's it's been in history in islam where we have had famous personalities get married through people who do matchmaking and then now you have the all modern way where you you know you have facebook you have twitter instagram online you know uh, matchmaking websites um and all of these things now would you say what would you say is there one effective method or would you say no let's go to let, let's stick to the traditional way because it's safer more reliable you know more authentic because you actually get it from people who have been in that you know who have an expertise in that field or you say no the modern way is actually good because you get to know the other side the matchmaker doesn't i think uh there's there's obviously the traditional way the modern way right. um and uh, you can say traditional versus modern mm-hmm. i don't think that's that's the the right wording i think it's uh, there's there's different ways um and i don't think the the issue is with the way it's is done i mean if you the main the main point is your principles uh islamically okay as well as ethically um i think that's just as important um you need to have those principles those those uh you know uh, the basis to how you know how you're going to be approaching this islamically or li- you know your limits as well i think that's a very important point um and then the platform of, of where you go and how you how you search and you know where you search and so on um you know i, th- I don't think there's a there's a right or wrong i wouldn't say you know completely take out uh you know websites for example using you know these uh, dating uh, islamic dating yeah. websites but i think like you said there's a safe there's a safe way safer way and you know so i think that's where it comes to i think it's the it's, it's sort of choosing the safer way you know you're not you're not going to be you're not going out to buy a car very <laughs> true <laughs> okay um it, it's, you know you, you're not you're not doing that you're buying some you know you're 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 sort of good doing something you're going to be you know your partner for life it's a long term you know uh, you're you're, you're, tra- you're going to have children with with that person um so you need to think more long term okay and i think once you think okay this is going to be the mother of my child is she suitable you know or the other way around I think that's that's when and, and I think the 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 principles are important. Right. And then you go on to okay which is the most suitable and I think choosing the safer less riskier face to face with references knowing who this person is I think that's you know I would recommend that more than uh, So you ones. you seem to be more of an old school uh, 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 person than than I say I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't like I said I wouldn't completely say no to the other yeah, to the to other modern. Uh, more modern but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's just a fruit. It's it's interesting because there was no emotion on you when when this was being discussed. Uh, no, I, I can't really tell whether you are someone who supports the modern or the or the or the, or the older. However, I would I like to pose this to you. Um, if if we stick to the matchmaking uh, concept where you have we have the other, I I I personally know of of fifteen fifteen to seventeen years ago the the tradition was to go to the house and see the girl and then and then you know you get the opportunity to see and and talk to them. And now you have this uh, you have the matchmaking one where now the the debate is do they go outside and meet each other and then the third one is with the modern where we just come across on on social media and, and you know you, do, you you meet up and whatever happens i don't know what the success rate of each one is okay but if you were to choose one system and if you are told this is now going to be the stepping stone and the foundation for the future to come and set up somewhere where you could link to potential uh, spouses which one would you choose um i wouldn't restrict it to one system right i don't think any system is as su- is more successful right. than the other one um if you know exactly what you want in a marriage and you know um and you know if it's the right reasons so for example if it's religious or not or you rank them and tick five boxes all the your priorities and five that are not um you know exactly what to look for whichever system you take on and they tick 3 out of i don't know 5 then you know you you can go for a second date or a third date that's fine um some people prefer to give respect to their parents um so for the parents to know for the parents to meet up 
to get to know the family. Um, the systems can work, each, each one of them can work. You can go into any system, so long as you, you're confident about yourself and you know what you're looking for. Um, I wouldn't say which one is the best one. I can't really tell which one's the best one because right. you know it, whichever one you go, there is a risk there. No matter how much you know somebody, even if it's personal, somebody who you know for ten years, you could be wrong. You could not know them at all until you get right. married. So. Well, we'd probably have someone say that the 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 marriages that happened 15, 20 years ago had more chances of surviving than than the current ones. Now, that's because of the matchmaking, or is it because of of the current issues that they face? Is is something for for a separate topic? My question to, to all of you here is the community today, every, every, every community today looks down, well I wouldn't say looks down, but does not give importance or priority to matrimonial services. You know, the, you have, there is no, as, as a youth and, and as a survey has been conducted, it says there is no outlet for the youth to go out there and find a potential spouse. Now, um, interestingly on my way here when I was, when I, I was with someone in the car and they said that you can't really find someone on the streets because even if you did find someone attractive on the streets, you can't just walk up to them and ask them if they want to get married to you or you know exchange your numbers. And then you have a second outlet, which is to go to the mosque for for you know for programs for wilada or, or shahada. Not ideal, not ideally the best place to meet someone. And then you have some some communities that do set up you know programs for you know marriage and you know matchmaking and this. But then the people that you're actually looking for don't turn up to those you know those, those programs. Uh, there was a recent one held held up north, and and half of them were already married. You know they just came because they wanted to give the experiences. Now the question is, what's next? I mean, is there a way? Um, would you say, Sidna, that? community leaders and elderly of the community need to come on from that thought that matrimonial is not you know um, uh, you know something that should be looked down upon and in fact needs to be given higher priority given the circumstances now um, I wouldn't say that we should rule out any of the methodologies used um, in uh, uh, finding out uh, a good spouse and every method should be used but positively and unfortunately at the moment we are struggling especially in the western world uh, where people are you know uh, not uh, you know they're struggling for the right people for the you know the people are ready to get married right. but they don't know where to look how to find a spouse um, and how to approach the uh, you know the family so these are the issues that we are facing yes. but i think there should be more efforts made right. where people actually do come and meet uh, once a year let's say the month of shaban we have uh, um, you know different days in different uh, different weekends in different uh, big towns where people actually come and, and meet with respect you know with honor with uh, Islamic hijab and everything but there should be other methods uh, explored uh, in introducing people to each other because at the moment um, like you said and I also agree people have uh, not completely lost but generally lost the faith in matrimonial services and the traditional methods because they're not finding this uh, you know in olden days if the, the the day they decided okay now we're ready to get married you know yeah. my son is right ready to get married within a month to two three months six months they said okay we are now decided the dates are set everything is fine right. but now people actually spend months and sometimes even a few years and they don't find the right person so there is an issue out there uh, which the community leaders are not addressing but they're all concerned about they're all working trying to work hard um, but we haven't come up with a positive mechanism where right. we can uh, try and adjust the community, um, you know, the upcoming community members, young members. Right. Before before I, I move this question to uh, to both of you, uh, we have a, a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I'm uh, calling from New Jersey, and I have uh, a couple of suggestions to make. Uh, before you get into any marriage, which is an extremely serious agreement. You have to consider two aspects, which are extremely important. One is the mental condition of both the girl and the boy, and the other is the physical condition of the girl and the boy. I have come across numerous cases where mentally sick people, those who get married, they are walking dynamites. They can create huge problems. I have also come across cases where there were physical deformities in uh, girls and boys, and that created huge problems after the marriage was consummated. So I think before you enter into this, it's not a leap in the dark. You have to be very careful. You just do the right, uh, uh, take the right steps for that. Uh, 
there should be an organization or an institute maybe molana ali rizvi over here can form some sort of a organization where he issues a certificate regarding mental and uh, physical after they get it from the hospital or from the clinic because that is extremely important for example if both the girl's parents and the husband's parents are diabetic you should never get married in that family absolutely not i will tell you cases of muscular dystrophy which took place because of lack of medical uh, importance to the question you know so please uh, consider this before you make a decision thank you that's a very um, very interesting point now before we get into this um obviously we have we have the, the two of you from the IUS now obviously communities have failed um to come up with an effective uh, platform um of matrimonial service would you say um, organizations like yourself like all these ahlul bayt societies and all these societies at universities could potentially offer a platform for students or you know for for youths to actually meet up at or at events at organizations you know at uh, you know at at, at celebrations as, as said na pointed out and then take it from there i think there's uh, there's a lot that can be done uh, by different organizations right. whether the youth whether the islamic centers as well um but uh, the issue comes of sort of regulating this uh, it's very important yeah Uh, I wouldn't recommend, you know, a a, a youth only sort of atmosphere Very where true. it's being regulated by the youth themselves. Some of them married, some of them not married. I think that's that can, uh, you know, it, it can have some issues. Yes, true. I think the most successful ones, and I think as a community uh, here, I think we have failed, unfortunately, to pro- provide, you know, platforms for for especially those that are living in, you know. Uh, areas which uh, very you know uh, limited uh, community is there there's no local centers uh, too close um and i think you know the the, the point is that it's, it's culturally as well some platforms can be looked at um in a very in a, in a negative uh, way and i think we have to come overcome those cultural uh, issues um because you know marriage is a, is a good thing it's recommended islamically So why do we look at let's say someone you know I, I, there is a negative uh, image or a negative view of you know what's this you know is this some sort of uh, <laughs> uh, you know matchmaking dating you know yeah. we're not comfortable you know let's let's stick to traditional I don't think that's you know I think we need to be much more open right uh, as a community uh, we need to not limit things culturally right uh, if it's, it's marriage islamically is acceptable. but we need to get these platforms whether it's the IUS or other other sort of uh, organizations and i think especially the islamic centers where they have a location and anyone can go anytime much more suitable maybe but they need to be regulated right very interesting when you talked about culture um sister furu i want you i'll i'll come back to you to answer um something to do with with cultural references because they always say it's a lot of cultural references a lot of cultural clashes come from the from the female side when when they get married to 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 another culture now whether we do recommend or whether it is something of a good opinion to to get married between between different cultures is something i want you to address but before we get there we have um another caller on the line assalamu alaikum Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brother on the show. Yes, please tell us your views. Just I don't want to I I want to interfere. Molana sahab, salam alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, now I just wanted to tell just before me someone was talking about doctor is certificate and he has said about diabetic absolutely not to marry with them. Why the boy or girl? that is not fair as far as i understand about islam law i just wanted to tell you just clarify that this man or this girl is diabetic that's it islam has said you can't say you can't marry to them otherwise the people will uh, where he will go he will do haram then i'm sorry about interfere i just wanted to tell you thank you very much iltima se dua very nice program khuda hafiz Thank you very much. Uh, said na it's it's always something that he's uh, if if he's if he's a great re- uh, mind reader then he's read my mind because that was my next question. Mm-hmm. But l- let's get to this 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 cultural thing. Um sister Furu they say that you know when 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 someone gets married to another culture 
Now, now this is where the whole issue comes. What is marriage? Is it is it uh, is it between two two faiths? Is it between two uh, you know two two families, or is it two cultures? Now, because you could have someone getting married to to a culture where they have absolutely no idea of, and then you could have a cultural clash where the the in-laws cannot talk to the you know to their to their daughter-in-law, their son-in-law because of a of a language barrier. So, would you say it is recommended to have cross you know cross-cultural marriages, or would you say it is it is best to avoid if there is a lot of chances for, for problems. Mm, I think that's an interesting question because if you look at culture, there are two meanings to culture. One, as a community, um, that they have their own culture. And secondly, the family have their own culture too. So you may have two families from the same, um, from the same area, per se, um, mm. from the same background, but with different cultures. It's the way they've been brought up. Um, and culture within a community, a huge community, can be very different from another community, say for example, Iraqis and Pakistanis. So there are two levels that you need to look at. Um, whether you need to get married into different cultures or not, there are good and bad people everywhere. Um, you need to set your, um, your standards in a religious way if you're looking to get married. That's the right way. Um, to look at what the prophets have said, of what the Halil Bayt have said about marriages. Um, and then go into marriage. But once you're in it, and you know, even though it's clash within cultures, you should have that tolerance level to make it work. That's what marriage is all about. Right. Um, however, you should investigate before mm. whether you want to go into another culture or not. I mean, my family, my dad's Afghan, my mom's Iranian, my brother is married to an Iraqi, my uncle is married to an Austrian. I mean, we have a whole range there, but we all get along because we all have that tolerance level and we understand each other. So, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you can have good and bad people everywhere. Well, interesting, because I was about to ask you my next question to you, yeah. Levin, on a, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest. What would you uh, score when it comes to your opinion on cross-culture? You pretty much are on 10.5 now, given <laughs> <laughs> the background you have. So, now let's get back to the caller. And I want um, everyone's views here. Um, th the previous scholar before this dear brother said something to do with physical um, and mental yes. basis. Now, obviously, I, it's something that you can't really 100% um, agree to, uh, according to me, is because you know, some people have physical disabilities and uh, that shouldn't limit their, you know, their, their chances of getting married. But then there's also a very important, to important thing that he mentioned about the mental well-being of a person because if the person is not mentally well and you do actually end up getting married, then there's more chances of you not surviving, right? Um, I think it is important to have both physical and mental and disclose it to both the parties. Right. But that shouldn't be a barrier for a person to choose a partner. We should never limit ourselves and there are now many, many methodologies that say that you certain illnesses if you have, you do the blood test and then you can avoid that illness. So if you uh, marry another person who doesn't have the same blood, you know, there are medical tests yeah, yeah, that you yeah. can do and that way basically the, uh, you know, the illnesses will not transfer, you know, because of the genes will not, you know, they're not matching. So there are, it's, these are important but they're not the, the basis. They shouldn't be the basis. No. One of the most important bases for the marriage is um, you should find out about you know the psychological being. But you know when people ask us, uh, how would you describe your personality? Mm. Many times we mark the one that we think or we want to be, but we really are not, and we haven't explored our own selves. Right. I need to really deeply think: Am I really? Uh, you know, uh, uh, an extrovert, let's say, for example, do I really like, you know, you know, uh, uh, compatibility? You know, I like working during the day. One person says, no, I like working, you know, the night shifts. Yeah. Uh, many people are claustrophobic. The other person says, no, I'm, you know, uh, I can't uh, sleep in the dark. Now, you need to be honest, you know, don't say what you really want to be, what you really are. True. It can help the other person understand you better. And when you're not honest, they do not understand you. When two people understand each, each other's psychology, they don't have to be similar. Many times they can be very much different and they can get along very well with each other. Right. Just like in friendship, partners can be very different and very strong in relationship. It, they don't have to be exactly the same personality. Sometimes people do say opposites attract, but that's not always true. But some people are very similar and they get along and some people are not similar right. but they get along very well because they are truly understanding each other's psychology and and that should be the case 
when choosing a partner, don't just make up stuff about yourself. Be honest when you're telling the other person who you are. Yes. Uh, and that helps. Rather than just basing it on just a few tests, medical tests and psychological tests, if a person has anger management problem, they should get anger management treatment. All of the uh, problems have treatments. Have a solution, very true. Yeah. Everything has a solution. And all you need to know is know yourself and know your partner, and then you can get along. Right. That's, that's very interesting um, what you mentioned about the, the things that you look into a partner. Well, we'll obviously break in for, we'll go for a Salah break. Um, and when we are back, um, Sister Furu, we will start with you when we are back. Um, how, what would you say um, are, the, are the things to look into your spouse? I mean, are we too narrow-minded where a lot of times discussions say, uh, you know, they have to have taqwa, right? And, you know, as long as they're God-fearing, that, that, that's the right person. But is that the only criteria that we should have? You know, and then we have, you know, and then we have uh, people who have the condition of, uh, you know, physical appearance. Is that, is, that, is that something that, which is looked down upon a lot these days. If you say, I'm not going to get married to someone until she's beautiful as I want, or he or she is handsome or beautiful. And then that's looked down upon as well. Now, what I would say is, once you come back from, Salah, from, from the Salah break, I want you to tell us whether there are a certain number of things that are fundamental in you know, in, in, in a relationship, and then there are some things that can be worked upon. Um, and then from that, we'll then take you to brother, brother you know, we'll take you to, to Sayyidina, and I want Brother Qasim to, uh, Brother Karim to give me your final thought on whether <coughs> IUS or Ahlul Bayt societies or communities have something in common to come together under one umbrella and set up a different organization or anything separate to to bring upon this matrimonial services in front. But dear viewers, um, before we go on a solar break, a quick reminder that you could um, get back to us and give us a call on the on the numbers at the bottom of your screen or tweet us on Ahlul Bay TV and also actively ask us your questions on Facebook and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Rahim and welcome back to your viewers to Ahl Bay TV Live on our final um, segment for this show tonight where we are discussing about how uh, to find a spouse. Now, before we end for break, there's a lot of things that were being discussed here, but we will we'll trim it down because we have the final this is the final segment for tonight until next week. Let us discuss um, the the main question, which is obviously, how do you actually manage to find a spouse? Now, we, we did discuss the modern and the traditional ways, but let's go to the solution part, because you've already identified the problem. Where would you say, Sister Furu, is, uh, where, where would you say is a starting point for us now to take from here and for everyone watching, as in where does the homework begin? How do you start doing this? Um, to look for a spouse? Yes. Um, I think you should start with by networking. You should start with your family, you know, ask around, ask friends, families that you have. If you're going to work, perhaps there are people there. Um, but don't break the Islamic barrier. I think that's a starting point. Um, several mosques have matchmaking um, services. You can approach them. Some people don't know. Um, I think Sheikh Rizvi will know a lot better. So I'll pass on to him. I've said that before, before I come to you, because I know there's, there's a counter question that I want to ask to you. Uh, Brother Karim, tell us, uh, with your experience uh, uh, you know, as, at, at IUS and obviously with, you know, on, a, on a personal level, what would you say is, um, you know, is, is the thing that societies like yourselves could do to bring about this, uh, you know, a new phenomena in matchmaking? I think education is uh, is one of the uh, roles we can play uh, as an organization and I think education is, is one of the important things. Um, there's places like Malaysia where there is uh, compulsory uh, pre-marriage courses actually uh, I've been looking at and uh, you could see, I, I, seeing that you know it's, it's interesting because it's actually looking at it from a different angle you're Okay, so w the location, fine, but what are you going to be looking in that person? And do you know what you want, really, as well? 
Um, so I think uh, as as an organization, uh, IUS and other, uh, so, you know, as IUS, I could say on, on our behalf, um, you know, education, education, educating, uh, you know, young people on, um, you know, how, you know, pre-marriage, you know, post-marriage as well, because I think the post-marriage uh, is important. I think other organizations as well, there needs to be more of a role on counseling as well. I think that's a very important uh, uh, you know, sort of a project. I think which a lot of uh, there, there is sort of there are some uh, of these available, um, but they're very limited and they deal with mainly the problems. But I think it's sort of prevention rather than uh, trying to cure. Yeah, but but but, but again, the, the question the question here we have is where and how. So where do I, as an individual or any individual across the globe, go out and say? This is potentially somewhere. If I if I keep coming and if I keep hanging around, I could actually find the person I'm looking for. You know, I mean, you have, you have you to end up in 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 areas which are not not very Islamic and and actually end up doing haram things. So, as an organization, as IUS or any other organization or anyone who's watching here, and obviously saying that you have a few people who do matchmaking, so there has to be a particular different way of you know approaching this and saying. You know what, um, we as IUS is what we want to do now to enable people, to give them a platform to come and meet different people. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, being part of something bigger because, you know, this needs not just uh, IUS as a youth organization, it needs other organizations, uh, it needs uh, scholar support as well. I think, you know, Islamic scholars need to play a, a part in, in sort of uh, supporting this or showing their support that, you know, IUS or this organization or that organization uh, is doing such a thing and we support it because I think the reaction I think a lot a lot of people sort of look at the reaction that you might get um, you know what is this what's this matchmaking uh, sort of uh, program or event and you know they might not feel comfortable but if it's supported by you know people like the Sayyid or, or other sort of scholars um, in, the, in the UK um, I think that would work, you know, even abroad as well, other organizing, organizations want to do the same. I think you need that support uh, and, and that backup, uh, you know, saying that, look, this scholar, this scholar, this scholar, they support this program. Bring your, your, your you know, your children or, you know, or, or you come and, and, you know, this is approved. Um, and I think, I mean, there's, there's different ways to do it. I think, you know, I, I would say events, you know, it's been done by, by other organizations. Um, where they have events and you sort of go around and you know uh, everyone sort of have their own profile I think you know events should we should encourage events more um, whether IUS can play a role I think the IUS role can be more of an educational role um, uh, maybe due to because as a volunteer organization we're quite limited on resources but I think the Islamic centers should play uh, mm -hmm. A big role in sort of making this not just once a year, you know, something more uh, frequent, frequent yeah. um, where you know youth can come and uh, with their parents potentially, um, and and you know have some sort of matchmaking. Right. Uh, so 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 said said that Kareem mentioned a very interesting point here that uh, which 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 is <laughs> which is very very funny as well because um, to have a scholar or a respected person approve of an, of an event actually goes down really well and we have obviously seen that in the past but, but it also certifies that the Islamic boundaries are maintained now you as a scholar and obviously a group of scholars that, that, you, that you may be knowing you must have a role to play in this right and, and we have a question that comes in if, if I go to a scholar and I ask him how do you expect me to find a spouse a lot, a lot of the old school if, you would, if, if that's the right way to call them would say come to mosque and you'll find them in, you know, in, in shahadas and miladas and, and do volunteering work and you might bump into someone but obviously that's not the right way forward there is a way that you as scholars and a group of you who know effective people is there something that you have thought along the lines and said, maybe this is what I should implement? Um, so there are two questions here, where and how. I think yeah. the first and the most important um, uh, answer would be where is not just limited to one particular place, right. one particular platform. Uh, a person has to explore all the different methodologies that are out there. Uh, you know, the different websites which are for the Shia matchmaking or whatever. Um, and there are many different uh, people who are matchmakers who, who look for who try and uh, propose to you based on your profile so they have different methodology of 
uh, aside from your profile and then who you're looking for. If there is anything matching, then they basically try and say, okay, this is someone that matches your profile and they would recommend. Um, so I wouldn't rule out anything, but we need to explore new methods and we need to explore. We have a meeting very soon next week um, with a group of different matchmakers who are coming um, together. So uh, I'm going to be heading it and we are exploring and we're trying to explore new methods. Um, we're going to look at some of the methods. There are many methods that are failures. Right. So we have seen that many of the things have not worked. So now let's see the things that have worked in some of the other communities, right. some of the other Muslim communities, and we'll try and introduce some of those things. Now, uh, so we need to have events through the country, different places, and where is the key? But I don't limit it to one particular where. I think that you need to explore all the different ways yeah, there are yeah. to, to try and look for the right partner. Now, the key how. Now, a lot of the people feel very um, concerned to propose to someone. Right. Yeah. Now, um, you may laugh at this, but no one likes to feel rejected. Yeah, fear of rejection, yes. Now, many people think that it may be the case for the girls. No, it is the case for both. Yeah. girls and boys now you have a lot of the boys okay i proposed six different places and they all rejected me i'm a reject and that sort of feeling puts a person on the negative end yeah um so how is the key who is talking on your behalf now sometimes you know people say okay can you can you represent me can you go and propose to someone on my behalf well hang on i don't know you i don't know the person how can i just Go and propose on your behalf. Right. You need your family to speak. Well, they have you know proposed a few places and it has failed. So it is the key how you approach a family. What are they looking for that they see in you and say yes? Right. Um, and so it is the key again. How do you propose to a family? Right. Um, so that before we continue, we have um, a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum, Molana. Assalamu alaikum, brother Karim, and assalamu alaikum, sister. Um, basically, uh, uh, I have been trying to matchmake uh, uh, for about seven, eight years, and I have noticed now, uh, uh, past one, two years, I've noticed that the the apparently the boys' uh, mothers are very fussy. They won't even part with their boys' numbers so that we can, uh, you know, pass the. Uh, even the girls' numbers to pass it on to boys, you know, and it's going is very very difficult. Somehow we just haven't been able to match past uh, a year and a half or two years. Otherwise, we would at least match uh, six uh, uh, marriages, like you know. And it's very simple. I get phone calls from word of mouth, you know, that Sister Nasira is uh, helping in matchmaking. But recently, I've noticed that the mothers. You know, basically, there's a shopping around. We know, we know a guy, and um, he's been looking for past three years. Well, his mom has been looking past three years, and now the other son is grown up as well. And we just, you know, and so I, I do agree with Molana that we do need to explore. We do need, we need, uh, we need to make the, the boys and girls of obviously in front of either Molana or you know. Or, um, uh, well, I think Molana is the best, you know. And then maybe they can look, uh, they can find their spouse like that, you know. I don't know, but we we trying, we trying to explore as well, inshallah. And inshallah, with Molana Lira Zadiz's help, inshallah, Molana, with your help, we'll try and you know proceed and make this. We've got loads of girls, you know, inshallah. So we'll try and match them and get them married, inshallah, with your help, Molana. Um, thank you very much, dear sister. Um, we obviously have, have around five minutes left now. Um, let's just let's just get back to the caller. Um, she she said something in regards to how it's become very difficult in in the modern way, uh, the modern technology using the old school technology, which is which is matchmaking. Now, um, just just quickly, would you say that if you had one solution to this problem, what would that be said? Now? Um. To the technology, yeah. I do say uh, use it, but that shouldn't be the final method. Right. It should be a help uh, in finding out more information right. uh, or a potential 
um, you know, uh, wife or husband, but it shouldn't be the, you know, the, the, the final only word, right. the only way. It should be only a help. Brother Kareem, what would you say? Yeah, I think we shouldn't limit, definitely, I agree with the saying yeah. that we shouldn't limit the, the ways. Um, the lady that, that called in, um, you know, that is obviously word of mouth and knowing who wants to get married and, and so on. I think that's an important point and that's how traditionally it's been, it's been since before and now. It's to word of mouth, okay, I want, you know, someone wants to get married, you go to this person. But I would say the people that don't know this person, you know, how they reach uh, and so on. Even matchmaking sites, you know, it, it can take uh, a lot of money to actually advertise this yeah, throughout yeah. our community and get to, but what if people that can't go to that? So there, there needs to be different methods. Um, I think sort of, you know, a location where you can give a profile uh, securely with, with obviously all the data protection and, and so on, um, either to an Islamic center which you trust and where they can see, you know, okay, this person's personality is like A, B and C and then we'll try and see who nice. can who, who to match them with um, and so on. Yeah. So for, uh, I, I kind of change the question for you because um, the sister mentioned something about how the, 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 the mothers are, are very reluctant to give numbers of, of their daughters. Now that is obviously a sense of insecurity which is which to an extent is acceptable because as a, as, as, as a female it's very difficult to have your numbers just you know keep going around so would you say is it because of insecurity um, that, that that mothers are being reluctant or is it because of you know some some other various reasons I think there could be several aspects to this actually um, one it could be insecurity um, second there's trust I mean if you trust your daughter well enough uh, she wouldn't uh, go beyond the Islamic boundaries or just normal um, boundaries then you know you would give the number uh, and secondly is what would people say if yeah. I gave the number so there is fear as well I mean um, if you want to be protective you Mothers love their daughters and they really want the best for their child, but sometimes they can be overprotective and that could sometimes be a bad thing. So they shouldn't really, really limit them not right. to give their number. Right. Um, thank you very much, my honourable guests. Um, unfortunately, dear viewers, we are um, f finally running out of time, which is very unfortunate. It is very true when they say marriage itself, there is no end in talking and the topic itself has no end. But we do promise you we have one more segment of this show next week and there will be more aspects discussed about this. However, in order to get this, um, this forward, we will take your feedback on our social uh, networking websites, obviously, and IUS and Sayed himself we wish you good luck for your meeting next week and inshallah we have favorable uh, results coming in and to the sister who just called in who does matchmaking may Allah bless your efforts until then we will see you next week assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh